And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Hi! Yes! If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, the Pope on Film. I mean, who isn't? Nowadays, in this day and age, it, it, at this hour, uh, in this, the, that was a great catch. Mel dropped their phone, but then did one of those things. Oh, do, do, do. Really yeah. nice. Really nice. You're like, are you Chris Angel? Because I just got my mind freaked. While you're pausing for a second. Yes, do I am wanna, pausing for a do second. Do you want to bugs with Eleanor later? I don't know. Maybe. So, uh, but only real fans, true hardcore fans of this podcast, like the real fans, they who have been with us since the beginning, back when this was a radio, a 1922 radio drama. Uh, the they would know the two basic facts that about the both of us, the two really real and in no way made up on the spot facts about the both of us. America's hottest podcasting couple, Bunny and Maylin. The uh, first and foremost, Bunny, is the fact that when you aren't doing this podcast with me, you are a celebrated psychic. Now, Bunny, if we could, I knew you were going to bring this up. Exactly. If we could be blessed with just a look at your powers, can you tell us what the future holds for our country? For our country. Oh. Oh, boy. Uh, after completely destroying the trans community, the right wing will go after the McDonald's franchise next. Nice. Because it is run by immigrants. They're Irish, yeah. but they're still immigrants. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, President Marjorie Taylor Greene will outwear, outlaw the wearing of shoes, feeling they are demonic. Uh, Makes sense. Secretary of State Lauren Boebert will declare war on Luxembourg. Yeah. And Taylor Swift will get fat. Wow. Thank you for that look into the future. And remember, my friends, future events such as these will affect you in the future. Yes. And the second fact, which is about me, is that I'm a lover of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. So this is the segment of the show where I get a story from the history books. Maybe one that people don't know too well and reword it via my own unique storytelling pizzazz. And that's what this is. Another educationally uneducational installment of Steve's Historic Approximation. Dun, 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 dun. Or Shap, as I like to call it repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wants me to or not. Now, personally, I like the name Shap. It's short and it's concise. It's the Dumbo of podcast segments. And remember, kids, the movie Dumbo, the animated, the animated version, it is a hair longer than an hour. So the animated movie Dumbo is the line of demarcation to decide if a movie is, in fact, long enough to be considered a movie. Yes. Like Disney Plus uh, recently released uh, what they called an all-new animated Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie. However, it is 58 minutes long. Oh. And since that is shorter than the 64 minutes of 1941's animated Dumbo, the Wimpy Kid movie is just an hour-long TV special. Yes. It's not a movie at all. So let's remember the Dumbo demarcation line. Yes. Oh, your Wimpy Kid movie is 58 minutes? No, no. 
that's a special hour long episode of The Office. Yeah. That is not a movie, good sir. Anywho, I was worried about saying good sir, because that's how I end the show. Uh, I was worried you would just start wrapping up once you heard it, like Pavlov. Possibly, but it didn't happen. In the clear. Good. Anywho, this week's Shappity Shap Shap is not about the Dumbo cinematic line of demarcation. Verbal copyright 2002, May Lin and the Pope on Film Podcast. All rights reserved. No! This week, we are getting in the spoopy season with a look at a trilogy of horror films and the downright ridiculous problems they had with censorship and with fighting the Motion Picture Association of America. And that's that's a long, that's a long thing to have to say over and over again. So we're just gonna shorten it a little bit. So instead of constantly saying the Motion Picture Association of America, I've shortened it to the Motion Picture Ass of America. Yeah. That's short <laughs> for the Motion Picture Association of America. The Motion Picture Ass of America. Okay. So the year was 1996. America is swept up in Macarena fever. Yes. Uh, no diggity. That's no what everybody diggity. was saying. No diggity. While it, everybody was saying that while reading Angela's Ashes and deciding which Spice Girl was their favorite. Meanwhile, a plucky young author named George R. 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 Martin. Yes. We later shorten that from nine R's to just two. He published a little book called A Game of Thrones. And 1996 readers said, Wow, this book is so good. I can't wait for the full six book series to finally be finished in, I'd say, about 10 years. 12, maybe 15 tops. I mean, no more than 20. Can you imagine if it were 26 years from now and the series still wouldn't be done, wouldn't, wasn't done? How would you show your face? Yes. How would you go out in public and go to a restaurant and eat food knowing that you still haven't written the six? Freaking book! Also in 1996, Marvel Comics went bankrupt. Wow! They're never gonna bounce back from that one! No. Uh, and now I have a surprise for you, Bonnie. I have a mini shap hidden within this shap. Uh, so... I'm I'm trying to learn about what happened in 1996. Whenever I talk about a specific year, I always try and, you know, go back in time to what was popular that year. And apparently in 1996, in New Zealand, AP News reported that in Wanganui, New Zealand, which, to give you some uh, clarity, is 110 miles north of Wellington, which, as we all know, is where the vampires and werewolves are. Yes. If you're a werewolf or a vampire or a swearwolf and you live in New Zealand, you definitely live in Wellington. I saw a whole documentary about it. Although you should not be living in Wellington, but apparently you do. Yeah. So... In Wanganui, New they have Zealand, a crack force looking for you. They do. They yeah. do. I like them. So in Wanganui, New Zealand, a 21-year-old man with a bomb walked into the offices of Star FM Radio. He took the station manager hostage and threatened to blow up the radio station. Unless they played the Muppet movie song Rainbow Connection on repeat to, quote, tell people how he felt. The station, Star FM, was forced to play Rainbow Connection for over 12 hours. 
Okay. Police eventually stopped the young man whose name they never released. And that was that. Period. The end. That's the end of the story. I'd tell you more if there was more. There's not more. There was even an American journalist who went to New Zealand to try and find out more, and he interviewed the people at Star FM and the station manager and the people who were there at, at the time. They have no idea who this person was. They, it, it, they never released the name, and, and he was allowed to just get help. In America, they just would have shot him dead. Yeah. So that's fascinating. That is fascinating to me. Uh, there's no way. That's basically a preemie shap. It's really small. Doctors don't have hope that it's going to grow into normal size. Yeah. So that was the mini shap. Yes, Eleanor? No, I'm not almost done. I'm on shap. I'm just about to start the shap proper. I just did a mini shap. Now I'm on to the shap shap. On December 20th, 1996, a movie came out, and it was a horror movie. The studio was mad nervous about this. They said, look, we know you're a horror director and we trust you, but are you sure we should be releasing a horror movie five days before Christmas? It just seems a bit risky. Yes. Because... Okay. This is the prestige time when award winners are being released and those movies that they're trying to release before the Oscar cutoff because December 25th is the cutoff for the Oscars. So that's why a lot of movies will come out on Chris Christmas Day or right before because they want an Oscar. And so here is this horror movie coming out five days before Christmas and the 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 director is like, oh, don't worry. Don't worry about this. See, here's my plan. All of these Oscar bait movies are coming out, right? All of these dramas. So teenagers don't have a film to go to. They will all go to our movie. Okay. Uh, I can appreciate the logic. Yeah, but the studio is still like, I still don't know. Still not sure. This is still a bit risky. But hey, at least we've got a major <clears throat> star in it. Our star of the picture, Drew Barrymore. Wait, Ooh. what? Dies in the first 10 minutes. Ooh. Um, we're still going to base the entire advertising campaign on her. We're going to... We're going to Vivian lay this bitch. Okay. It's going to be Drew Barrymore. Scream. So Scream came out on December 20th, 1996. And you would not believe the amount of money that it made on opening weekend. Give a guess, money. Give a guess. Give a guess. Uh... Give a guess. I'm just going to give it a, gen a generic it tanked. You are absolutely correct. On opening weekend, it just made six million. That's it. Yeah. Period. And the studio said, oh, man. I guess Wes Craven is just all washed up. I guess we're not in the business of making Scream movies. Okay, wrap it up. Wrap it all up. We're done. This is dead in the water. We're done. No more scream. But it like so so this many people, so few people went to go see Scream on opening weekend. But the people who did see it did go to their friends and say, "Dude, I saw this freaking weird ass horror movie." It's called Scream. It's all meta, although I don't think we say that in 1996, but still, it's super meta. Uh, and it's like a horror movie that's making fun of horror movies. You should go see it. So the second weekend, it made even more money. The third weekend, it made even more money. A month into it, and it was the number one movie in America. And that does not happen. 
it is very rare that a movie comes out and then just keeps making more money. But that is exactly what Scream did based on word of mouth. It is shocking, too, because when it first came out, you know what movie beat it? Beavis and Butthead do America. Nice. When Scream came out, more people said, I want to go see the Beavis and Butthead movie and not Scream. But yeah, it ended up in its in its run. I, I still have not seen Scream. The first one is freaking wonderful. It is a great movie. Because it's a movie that is aware of horror movies. I hate that. I would I would have watched every single solitary episode of the Walking Dead TV show if they knew what zombies were. Yeah. No one on that show has ever seen a horror movie before. No. It's ridiculous. And it's just it, it I you know, that's one of the things I like about uh, uh, uh the dead, what is it? Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. Shaun of they the know dead. George Romero. They're aware of the thriller video, you know? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's that's what I hate. So it's really cool cuz it's a horror movie that knows about horror movies. Yes. And so it's really good in its in its first run. The movie Scream made 87 million dollars, but it did so good that it it made 87 million dollars in theaters. Then it was removed from theaters. But fans wanted it back, and so it came back to theaters 4 months later. <laughs> It they released it again four months later, and it made another sixteen million worldwide. The first Scream movie made one hundred and seventy three million dollars, which is nice. phenomenal for a film that had an opening weekend of just six million dollars. Since then, they have made five films, a TV series, and you see so many freaking masks every Halloween. I have done a lot of trick or treating these past two weeks, and let me tell you something. Every freaking kid that I saw with a Mike Myers mask, I wanted to ask them specific questions about Halloween 3. Yes. I'm not one of those people where it's like, oh, you're wearing a Slayer shirt? Name your three favorite Slayer albums. Which drummer's the best? Ha, ah, trick question. There were three, you know, one of those, like, I'm, I'm not a gatekeeper sort of a person, yeah. but I keep seeing these like 11 year old, 12 year old boys with uh, uh, M Michael Myers masks. And it's like, tell me, a, tell me, sing to me the Silver Shamrock song right now, you 10 year old boy. Yeah. And if you can't sing the song, <laughs> I'm taking the freaking mask. <sighs> happy, happy Halloween, Halloween. Halloween, happy, happy, happy Halloween, Halloween with silver, silver shamrock. shamrock. Do 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 do. Watch. Do 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 do. And then freaking crickets come out of your eye holes or something. I don't know. So, <laughs> oh, what was I doing? Oh yeah, everybody wears the masks. Um, uh, I don't, I don't want to focus on the entire series, the entire history of the saw of the of the scream series. I want to focus on the original trilogy, the first three films, and the trouble that they had with the motion picture ass of America. Okay? Okay. Okay. Let's go. Scream 1. Wes Craven edits the film. He sends it in to get a rating. The motion picture ass of America says, Too intense! MC-17! <laughs> And that's just the kiss of death, you know? Wes Craven is like, well, we can release it NC-17. I think that would be fine, but the studio is demanding an R. You have to get it to an R, Wes. Get it to an R. So, okay, he re-edits it. He re-edits Scream. He resubmits it for a rating. And again, the motion picture ass of America comes back too intense. NC-17! Funny, I got a question for you. How many different cuts of the film did Wes Craven submit until he finally got an R rating? 
I'm gonna go five. Eight. 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 And even on the eighth attempt, the motion picture ass of America said, too intense, and C-17. Even the eighth one was denied. They took issue with a lot, especially the opening scene with Drew Barrymore. You know what Wes Craven did? The balls on this man. The gabagoo. He, uh, he lied through his teeth and, and literally went to the motion picture ass of America and said, yeah, see, here's the problem with the opening scene uh, with Drew Barrymore. Uh, we only took one take. You know that Drew. She really is a special actress, and she did such a good job that, you know, she just nailed it. And, yeah, that's the only take we have. Sorry, we can't redo it. So the motion picture ass of America said, well... I guess that's fine, but you have to change this, you have to change this, you have to change this. The Still, the motion picture ass of America won't budge at all on the NC-17. So in comes our hero. Don't worry, everyone. I'll talk to the MPAA personally and get them to give us that R rating. Yes, me, your hero. Harvey Weinstein. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Harvey shoot. saves the day. Harvey saves the day. Yeah. So he talks to him and gets him to agree. Okay. The eighth take, that one can be fine. You can release it. So, uh, sure enough, the MPSA reviewed their decision. They gave the X, the eighth cut. That sweet R rating, that's a wrap on Scream 1. Now on to Scream 2, where the points are doubled. So, the first Scream movie did such huge bank. It made $173 million on a $15 million budget. So, immediately the studio rushes a second Scream into production. They busted ass into production so hard that the first scream. I know, but hold on. The first scream came out on December 20th, 1996. And the second one came out on December 12th, 1997. Yes, less than a year later, we got Scream 2. Yes. That's how quickly they rushed that into production. And Wes Craven is there going. Fuck. I'm going to have to go through it again with the motion picture ass of America. I'm going to have to go through it again. We're going to have to. That fight took so long. You know how long it takes to edit one film, let alone to edit it eight times? That's crazy. I do not want to do this again. I am so upset. How, how am I going to do this? There's got to be some way that I can do this where I can trick them. There's got to be some way to to put one over on the MPAA to trick them. What can I do? So, boom, Wes Craven comes up with a plan. Okay? He comes up with a plan so crazy that it just might work. So, he made his movie... Super freaking gory. Way beyond what he actually wanted to do. Well, yeah, but that's an old, old trick that I, I can't believe Wes Craven didn't know already. Yeah, no, no, no. It, yeah, so, so yeah, he went beyond what he wanted. He was trying some reverse psychology. And so, like, there's a scene where a character is stabbed in the ear. Okay, so when they filmed it, they had him, they had a close up of him stabbing him in the ear three times. Stab, stab, stab. And then when the MPAA says, hey, hey, that's too many, he can go, oh, shoot. Yeah, oh, man. Oh, geez, Rick. Oh, man. Oh, geez. I guess we'll just have to go with one stab. 
Ha ha ha, little did they know that's what I wanted to do in the first place. And so they overdid the gore for Scream 2, thinking that they are going to fool the MPAA. So this is what happened. He gets this super gory version of Scream 2, gives it to the MPAA, and the MPAA says, Ah, hey, Wes! How you doing? Man, that first Scream movie, that did huge, didn't it? Man, that was a real big su success story, and we're all proud of you. And, uh, oh, what's this? Another Scream? Scream 2? Yeah, whatever. It, it, we'll give it an R. So, uh, you thinking of doing a third? <laughs> and Wes Craven is like, fuck! Man, I... Are you serious? You're okaying this? This is a million times worse than the other one. Are you serious? And the MPAA said, yeah, well, after the first one, people are expecting the intensity. So go ahead and do whatever you want. So he, so he, basically he, he fooled himself. Because the MPAA was cool with it. So it's like, damn it. Okay. So he had to tone himself. He, he, he edited the film not because of the MPAA, but because of himself. Had to dial himself down. So, uh, so yeah. So, it, Scream Two did almost as much money as Scream Three. Scream Two made only one million less than the first one. So, there's definitely gas in the tank. So this time, they said, let's actually instead of rushing into Scream Three, Scream One was a hit. Scream Two was a hit. Let's actually take our time with the last... If this is going to be the last in the trilogy, let's make it count. So how about we take an actual normal amount of time to make Scream 3? So uh, Scream 1 was done quickly. Scream 2 was done quickly. Scream 3 was made three years later. So they actually took a normal Hollywood amount of time to make Scream 3 because they wanted to make it right. And Scream 3 comes out. That's the weird one with Jenny McCarthy and Carrie Fisher. Jay and Silent Bob are in it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So they really went all out with the third one. Scream 1 had a budget of 15 million. Scream 2 had a budget of 24 million. Scream 3, 40 million. They went all out for the finale of the Scream series. And that included. The gore, my friend. They went all out with the violence because they fought the MPAA in round one. And then in round two, they were ready to fight the MPAA, but the MPAA just rolled over. So they said, okay, the gloves are off. Taking off these gloves. I am ready. We are ready for Scream 3. We are going to go all out with this one. So much violence. Wall to wall violence. We're going to terrify her to this bitch. <laughs> It is going to be gory and messed up, and nothing's going to stop us. This will be the most violent film ever! But all of that changed on April 20th, 1999. You know what happened then, Bunny? Ten minute warning. What happened then? The third Scream film was ruined by the actions of two people. Eric Harris and Dylan freaking Klebold. <laughs> okay. The Columbine Massacre happened. And so America went, oh man, so uh, kids can just get guns and shoot up schools now? Man. Okay, who should we blame for this? I know. Video games and movies. Yep. They're the cause of all of this. So uh, they're like, we're going to make the scariest Scream movie of all time. You're going to freaking shit yourselves. It's going to be so scary. Wait, what happened in Columbine? <gasps> okay, <laughs> let's just make let's just make this the funny one then, I guess. So the Scream 3 was purposefully dialed down because of the Columbine massacre. And I find that fascinating. Yes. We will never know their full plans for the violence and gore of Scream 3, 
But that's why in Scream 3, it's focused on the making of a slasher movie based on Scream 1. So it gets all meta. They basically clerks threed Scream 3. Yeah. Because in Scream 3, they're making Stab 1. But then, oh, people are being killed on the set of this horror movie, and it, it's all meta. And Carrie Fisher plays a woman who looks like Carrie Fisher. Jay and Silent Bob are in it. It's really weird. Uh, fun fact, uh, there are some parallels now that people are seeing between the uh, the filmmaker in Scream 3 and Harvey Weinstein. So that's a fun thing to watch. Okay. Uh, and let me just let me just say, I've said this numerous times, and I want to keep saying it until I'm right. And I will be one day. Yes. If you're a Quentin Tarantino fan, enjoy his films now. He is a walking Me Too expose waiting to happen. Yes, he is. And it will. So enjoy it while you can uh this man is worth five hundred dollars and this man intends to collect his name is jake cahill and he lives by bounty law so that's it for shap this week the first uh uh scream movie i love second one's okay the third one's weird i never bothered seeing any of the other ones but the first one is a great freaking movie. It is funny, self-referential. It's a horror movie that knows it's a horror movie, and it's good. And it ushered in like a new age of horror movies that, that sort of knew that they were horror movies. It, it changed the genre of horror films, and I absolutely love the first one. But hey, uh, this won't be the first time in this podcast this won't be the last time in this podcast that we'll be talking about one really amazing movie and a really shitty sequel that never should have been released <laughs> hooray yeah if I ever meet Ron Howard and he has a mustache I am going to slap him so hard I'm gonna Will Smith his ass. I I I I would be a little more subtle about this, okay? I would just go a little more. I, I would pretend and think, "Wow, what an awesome fake mustache!" Grab one end of it and try to rip it off. <laughs> oh no, there's a caterpillar on your face! Smack! Oh no, it's still there! Smack! It needs a lot of hits. Smackity smack, smack, smack. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. So that's it for Steve's historic approximations this week. Uh, what's it going to be next week? I don't freaking know. But uh, we'll find out. So join us next time for more educationally uneducational fun with... Uh, I'm going to cover your ears, Eleanor, because this can be a bit loud. Steve's Historic Approximations! And cut on that. Funny, are you...